Hello everyone, so today we're going to go over how I built my $5,000 investment portfolio. So here is a screenshot of my Roth IRA account that I have with Fidelity. And I've had this account for about one year and so far it's going pretty well. So I'm basically going to talk about how I went about building this portfolio, uh, what was some of the investment strategies that I've used, and hopefully they can help you with your investing. Um, so before I started with Fidelity, I actually had a investment account, also known as a brokerage account, with a discount broker called Trade King. And Trade King eventually got bought out by Alibank. And I later realized that if I'm going to do some investing in a brokerage account, that I would prefer to do it in a Roth IRA because specifically with the Roth IRA, you get certain tax benefits that you don't get with a discount brokerage account. So I would recommend that if you're trying to do investing for the long term, uh, the Roth IRA is probably the best way to go about it. Now, you do have to earn less than $135,000 per year in order to qualify for this account. So as long as you make below that income threshold, you should be able to contribute to this type of account. Um, so let's go over my portfolio. Basically, this account I've had for about a year or so. and these are all the different holdings that I have for this account. And as of right now, my total value is about $5,481. And you can also see that my profit has been about $215 here. So overall, I've averaged about 4.10% throughout the last year. Um, there's been some really uh, interesting market fluctuations within, the, within this year. And it's actually has caused my portfolio to go down, but I'm not too concerned about I'm pretty well diversified here So I'm just gonna go down the list and show you guys each and every one of these index funds that I hold so all of these Investments you see here on the left hand side These are all ETFs and those are basically called exchange traded funds and basically these are similar to like mutual funds but they're passively managed um, and they have lower expense ratios and basically these type of uh, ETFs track a certain index within the stock market. So for example, you'll see that I have IVV and ITLT. Those are both ETFs that track the S&P 500. And so I pretty much invest in ETFs for the most part. That's one, one, that's one more thing about my old uh, investment account with Trading is I invested in individual stocks. And I actually lost a lot of money because I just didn't really know what I was doing. There's a, there was a lot of fundamental research that you have to do. And the more that I read and learn about investing, it becomes really difficult to forecast or predict what the future earnings of a company will be. So index funds or ETFs are a nice way to just uh, eliminate all of that time that you spend researching and just kind of invest in the entire market. Um, so anyways, let's go down the list here. And so basically the total asset allocation that I have right now, uh, I'm trying to shoot for about 15% um, or I, I think it's 10% of actual real estate. And you see that here, which is F uh, F R E L. And this is basically a RITS ETF and it holds companies that have real estate pro property. And as you can see here, my total value is about 441. I recently bought this one about last month, and that pretty much covers my 10% asset allocation for real estate. Now, I'm also doing about, I'm actually supposed to be doing about 70% of uh, domestic stocks or total stocks. Right now, I have about close to 85%, so I'm a little high in equities, simply because last year I spent a lot of time investing in, in companies, primarily uh, domestic companies in the U.S., um, just recently, I've started to invest in more international stuff. So like the ETF you see here is VT, and this is pretty much a total stock market holding a variety of different equities in international stocks and U.S. stocks. Um, now, some of the ones you see here, like IJK, IJR, IJH, those are mid-cap and small-cap. So these are middle-sized companies and smaller-sized companies. And the reason why I have these in my portfolio is because they're they have a they have more potential to grow than your large than your typical large companies. 
However, I only have about no more than five, maybe about 8% of small companies and including emerging markets. And so emerging markets are pretty much underdeveloped economies or markets like South Africa, India. Um, so I do have very little shares in emerging markets and small cap, which make up about 8% of my total portfolio. Um, I do have a significant amount of mid cap just because I feel they're, they're pretty stable companies and there's a lot of room for growth, but the majority of the equities that I hold are in large cap. Um, however, I do want to start investing in more international stocks. So I definitely will be looking into more developed markets and like in China, uh, maybe some Asian markets to get more foreign exposure in my portfolio. Um, so, so about I have about 85% stocks and then I have about 10% in bonds and that basically is a combination of AGG, which is the total bond market in the U.S., including corporate bonds, municipal bonds, uh, gov government bonds. And then I also have TLT, which is primarily 20-year treasury bonds. And I also have LQD, which is investment-grade bonds, uh, also known as corporate bonds. So I have about 10% bonds right now. I think I need to be about 15%. Um, actually, this month, I, I just bought some new shares in AGG. Uh, so that pretty much makes up my entire portfolio. I, I don't really do anything else other than ETFs. Uh, but in terms of how they've been, I, I do have some individual uh, sector ETFs. So for example, the ones you see with FTEC, FNCL, this is actually a financial ETF, and this is a technology ETF. Um, I actually just bought some industrial sector ETF as well, uh, just to maximize my di my diversification. Now, in terms of how they've been performing, uh, so again, a lot of these ETFs I bought on a monthly basis, and I use a strategy what's called dollar cost averaging. So each month, I try to invest the same amount of money because if the market's more expensive, then that means I'll buy less shares, which also means that you're going to pay uh, for overpriced stocks. And when the market is down, a lot of these ETFs are a lot cheaper, so you're able to buy more shares. So I stick to dollar cost averaging, uh, and I try to invest the same amount of money each month so that I make sure that I'm not overpaying for any of these ETFs. Uh, but anyways, lately, the market's been pretty pricey, pretty expensive. So I'm kind of just going back to asset allocation strategy where I'm just focusing on keeping a balanced portfolio. I'm not too concerned with the price ranges at this moment because I know that I'm following a certain asset allocation strategy. But again, uh, in terms of performance, you see here uh, bonds has been one per negative one percent. Uh, finance. Uh, this is FTIS. So this is industrials. Has been about. I actually no no. I'm sorry. This FTIS. This is consumer discretionary index. So it's all about consumer companies, large companies. And it's performed quite well, 16% since I bought it. Um, I just bought industrial, so it's you can see it's just uh, starting to see some 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 profits. And then I have negative two percent for financials. I have one percent for real estate. Twenty-two percent for technology, which is quite impressive. Uh, negative thirteen with emerging markets. So you can see that the emerging markets is a lot riskier. It's, it's probably been one of my most volatile ETFs, and that's probably the reason why I only have one share, which is $50, $52 of this emerging markets, because I know how risky emerging markets can be. Now, if you look at H, IJH, IJK, I've averaged about 3 and 7%. Small cap has done quite well since I purchased it at 11%. Uh, this is pretty much the S&P 500 that I bought earlier this year, 2018. And it hasn't really done much since then. Uh, my 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 SP 500 IVV has done about 4% since I bought it. And you can see I have about six shares total of $1,600 here. Uh, LQD, which is corporate bonds. I just bought these about three months ago, I believe in February, and it really hasn't done much. And also TLT, which is your treasury bonds. And then I also have this utility ETF, which pretty much holds all the companies in the utility sector. And that hasn't done very well as well either. It's only averaged about negative 
and then here is the total stock market. So you can see that the total stock market as a whole has not performed well since early this year, uh, and that's why you see negative 4%. But it's important that you don't get caught up in the highest rate of return simply because if you're chasing the highest rate of return, you may be exposing yourself to more risk. And one of the things that you have to keep in mind that is even though these bond ETFs and even the real estate ETFs are not producing much of a annualized return, you're still getting dividend or interest payments throughout the year. So like, for example, if with IGG and um, ITLT and LQD, which are all bonds, I actually get monthly interest payments that I'm able to reinvest. And as you can see here, if I scroll to the right, you, you'll see the quantity is 2.017. And so the 017 is what's actually reinvested when I get interest paid. Um, another good example is this real estate one, which, which is pretty much the highest dividend paying ETF I have. It pays out about 3.4% each year. So even if the ETF does not increase in value, I will still see a 3.4 dividend return on my ETF. And as you can see, um, I actually just bought this last month at $441 and I got paid that same uh, this I actually got paid this month and I actually reinvested all of my dividend earnings and it actually bought me a quarter of a share. So I know that in one year simply by holding 22 stocks of 20, 22 shares of real estate in one year the dividend itself should be able to um, reinvest to a whole share. So I buy a whole share with the dividend that I get. And that's the purpose of investing. That's why you invest. You invest in assets that pay you cash, and then you can use that cash to reinvest and create some sort of compound effect. Um, so I'm really happy for, I'm really happy to have this real estate ETF as well. Now, I'm not saying that you, you should invest in these ETFs specifically. These are just my uh, preferences. And a lot of the reasons is because I get free commission on these ETFs. So, for example, all the iShares and Fidelity ETFs, because I have an account with Fidelity, I actually get free commission on, and I don't have to pay any transaction cost, uh, which can really dig into your portfolio's gains. But if you look at my other ETF with VPU and VT, then those were actually Vanguard and I don't get commission free. So I actually had to pay $5 per transaction on, on those ETFs. And the only reason why I did it is because I trust Vanguard and I wanted to invest in international stocks, but that's pretty much the whole basic of it. Again, these are just the ETFs that I personally um, like to invest in. I don't, I'm not saying that you should invest in these particularly, but hopefully this gives you an idea on how you should build your, your portfolio. So I hope this video was helpful. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or feedback down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're interested in learning more about different investment topics, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be making a lot more videos in the upcoming months about investing. And again, I'm on my own journey. I'm still learning. And, and you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to share what I learned uh, with you guys. So thanks for watching and have a great day.